Speaker McCarthy's meeting with Taiwan's president here in Southern California yesterday was followed by House Foreign Affairs Chairman Mike McCall's arrival in Taiwan today with members from both parties. In the face of this united front from the U.S., China launched military drills close to Taiwan and vowed a, quote, resolute response. But it was notably low-key compared to China's firing of missiles over Taiwan and imposing a blockade when then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi went to the self-governing island last August. Joining me now is Leon Panetta, former Defense Secretary and CIA Director during the Obama administration and previously Bill Clinton's Chief of Staff. So what is your reaction to the bipartisan meeting between Taiwan's president, Kevin McCarthy, and China's response? You know, I, I think it uh, basically stresses uh, the difference between uh, democracy and autocracy. I think in a democracy, uh, having both political parties uh, come together to meet with a, uh, an official from abroad uh, is what we do. Uh, and uh, I thought it was important uh, to have a unified position there, to be able to meet uh, with the president from Taiwan, to be able to discuss common concerns. I think it was done with, uh, uh, in, in a low-key way that uh, is very appropriate here. Uh, president Tsai basically had a low-key trip. Uh, she didn't uh, go to Washington. She didn't try to meet with uh, high officials. Uh, she basically has kept it very responsible. And I think the meeting in California was another example of a responsible way to conduct diplomacy. Do you worry that it that the visit here to the U.S., though, which was more than just a transit, despite what they said, she went to New York, then she went to Central America, she came back in. Do you think it's going to further escalate tensions, which were already at a fever pitch between the U.S. and China? Well, the hope is that uh, China uh, doesn't overreact. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I realize uh, what they did after Speaker Pelosi's visit uh, and uh, the fact that it added to the tensions between the United States and China. Uh, but right now, President Xi is supposed to meet with uh, President uh, Macron of France, uh, meet with the European Union leaders, uh, trying to advance uh, their economic interests. Uh, I don't think this is a good time uh, to overreact. Will they? Uh, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think they know that uh, at this point in time, the more important issue is whether or not they're going to be able to maintain any kind of economic strength in Europe. This week, NBC News reported exclusively that that massive spy balloon actually captured and transmitted in real time intelligence from sensitive U.S. military sites, sometimes even doing a figure eight over the sites, before the U.S. shot it down, waiting until it got to the Atlantic coast. Uh, how concerned are you about that? That is something the U.S., the administration has not acknowledged. Well, what the United States has confirmed is what we suspected, which is that uh, this, was, uh, this was an intelligence uh, balloon whose main purpose was to gather intelligence. Uh, and it was a pretty sophisticated technology that was on board uh, that balloon. Uh, the ability to basically communicate information back to Beijing almost instantaneously. So it was, uh, it's a dangerous uh, intelligence gathering effort by China. And it was appropriate that uh, we stop it, uh, take it down. We should have taken it down probably earlier. But uh, it tells us a lot about uh, China in terms of their intelligence gathering capability and the fact that uh, that represents a threat uh, to our security. Uh, and uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to take action to make sure that we protect our security. That is first and foremost. Uh, and whether it's China or Russia or anybody else, uh, the first thing we need to do is to be able to protect uh, our national security. Uh, turning to the Middle East, this is the second day in a row that Israeli police have clashed with Palestinians at the third holiest site in Islam, Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, so it's the second time that they've done that. Richard Haas was on here yesterday and told me that it is just stupid to send Israeli forces into one of the holiest shrines of Islam because people were piling rocks and fireworks, as Israel claimed. Uh, the, the video coming out of there has been really disturbing. Secretary of State Blinken said that there's no doubt uh, 
you know, that there was a problem in, on both sides and that this should, you know, this, this is a cause of concern. How can the U.S. help moderate some of the responses here? Well, I, I would hope that uh, we might be able to uh, get uh, Netanyahu to, to recognize that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Uh, we've always been very proud of our relationship with Israel and the fact that they are a democracy. And a democracy uh, respects the institutions of a democracy uh, and freedom of religion, very frankly. Uh, and uh, the step uh, of going into a mosque and uh, uh, doing it in a very brutal fashion uh, only exacerbates uh, the troubles that Israel's in right now. Uh, Israel has enough problems dealing with uh, Iran, dealing with Syria, uh, dealing with uh, the issues that uh, they're confronting in the Middle East. Uh, they don't need to undermine their democracy, and I'm afraid that's what's happening right now. And I want to ask you about Evan Gershkovich, the Wall Street Journal correspondent. He's now spent a little more than a week in a KGB prison in Moscow. Uh, he has not yet been declared wrongfully detained. That process is, we're told, underway. Uh, what is Vladimir Putin trying to gain, and how do we get him out of here, out of there, and get him home safely when he's accused of espionage, when we know how the Kremlin usually handles these espionage cases? We've got Paul Whelan on a 14-year sentence, already having served four on a false conviction of espionage. Andrea, this is a, a typical uh, a Putin move, uh, and uh, it's a blatant move. Uh, we understand what's happening here. There's there's no other reason to have arrested uh, this correspondent than to hold him for some kind of trade uh, with uh, Russia's spies in, in this country and elsewhere. Um, but what it does is it, uh, it totally abuses uh, these individuals who are trying to do their job on behalf of journalism and trying to report the news. Uh, this is not a spy. We all know he's not a spy. Uh, but Russia doesn't operate that way. Russia operates on the, on the basis of uh, doing what it feels uh, it can do and get away with. And uh, so they're going to they're gonna take this individual. They'll probably have a show trial the way they did uh, uh, with others, uh, and then try to see if they can ultimately trade this individual for uh, a spy uh, in another country. Uh, it's a blatant abuse of international law, and it only confirms what we all know about Putin, uh, which is that uh, he is a criminal, really, in the eyes of the law. Leon Panetta, thank you very much. Always good to see you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being with us.